All right, let's walk you through what there is to look forward to today. The vote that we're talking about is going to take place in Sri Lanka. It's going to take place just in its parliament. There are 225 members of parliament, of which 113 are needed for a majority mark to be reached. The number one contender, remember there are three contenders. The number one contender, the current acting president, he's from the UNP party. His name, as you can see, is Ranil Vikram Singhe. Ranil Vikram Singhe has been prime minister five times already. He's the current acting president, as we've just said. Now, it's important to know that he is partly backed. I should add over here, he's partly backed by the SLPP party. There is a vertical split of sorts taking place within the SLPP party that we'll go into more depth about. This is the second contender. He possibly could wrestle it away from Ranil Vikram Singhe. We'll see later today. His name, as you can see, is Dulas Alaperuma. He's a former journalist who then joined politics. He has headed the media management ministries within the Sri Lankan government. He's a senior lawmaker. He's also been a dissident. He, remember, is also from the ruling SLPP party. And it's important to note here, he's got part of the SLPP party's support also. There's the thought that if he goes and if he becomes president, he may make Sajid Premadasa. Remember, Sajid Premadasa is the name of the man who was earlier the front contender. He withdrew from running in all of this. He decided to support Dula. He put his hands and his support behind Dula. Now it's thought that if Dula comes into power, he might make him the prime minister. Now, he's considered the dark horse because his name came up within the last few days. And very quickly, we're going to now take you to the third and last candidate. This is Anura Kumara Desanayaka. Now, it's important to note over here, his party, as you can see, the JVP, is one of the smaller parties in the mix. Largely, he's not expected to be able to wrestle this away from the first two. But what his candidature could do to the numbers, that remains the bigger question through today. That's what we're going to be taking a look at in just a second. As we've said, him and the man we just told you about, Dula, both of them are particularly strong critics of the Vikram Singhe government. Now, next, I have two colleagues with me to bring us much more of an in-depth picture. We have Purnima Murli with us live from Colombo. We have Abhishek Jha with us live also. Now, we're going to go over first to Purnima to ask her our questions. Purnima, for our audiences, can you lay out what we know about the way in which support is going to play out today, particularly when it comes to the SLPP. Because we know that the party that used to be Rajapaksa's stronghold, his own bastion, that party seems to have thrown its support between two different candidates. So could you tell us a little bit more about how today could play out? battle uh, between uh, Ranil and uh, uh, the last both from uh, both in fact uh, recommended and nominated by the ruling uh, SLPP uh, while the Rajapaksha family is uh, is hoping that Ranil wins today's uh, uh, today's uh, voting uh, however the last also has the support of not just a few uh, members from the ruling party but also the uh, uh, the opposition party Sajid, who earlier said that he wants to contest for presidency uh, post, has uh, finally uh, uh, backed the last, and the other smaller parties also have uh, maintained that uh, they would uh, they would uh, they would back the last, and those were some of the developments that happened late last evening. However, right now, because it's going to be a secret ballot, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, 10 a.m. is when the proceedings for uh, for today's. Uh, uh, for today's voting will start and then uh, every uh, two, 225 parliamentarians will then come and then vote. Uh, we'll have to wait and see but at the moment it's uh, uh, while uh, till day before it was Ranil who had uh, uh, who uh, had more support and more numbers on his side uh, with Dalis now getting more and more support from uh, the opposition parties uh, we'll have to wait and see but it's uh, going to be a tough contest between Ranil and the last both from the ruling party Rajapaksha is still hoping that Ranil uh, somehow wins, uh, wins, but uh, at the moment it's going to be a very, very uh, tough fight between these uh, two candidates. Purnima, if I may quickly ask you, where does popular sentiment fall? We already know that when it comes to Vikram Singhe, you've had a number of a number of vocal protesters say that if he becomes president, they will continue their pre uh, their protests. But what happens if Dallas comes into power? Do we know? Well, 
Well, sources say that uh, uh, Dalas as well as uh, uh, Sajid Premadasa, they have uh, they have in fact had uh, back channel talks. While uh, while the first uh, uh, priority for Sri Lanka is to get a new president. After that, after the new president is in place, the prime minister and the cabinet ministers will then be appointed. So Sajid Premadasa uh, is, is also now trying to contest for the prime minister's post. He hopes that if Dalas wins then he will become the Prime Minister and will have his own uh, cabinet also in place. So they've stuck a deal is what the sources say, uh, which is why Sajid at the last minute decided that instead of contesting for uh, the post of presidency, which will only split votes further, he's making it tough for Ranil uh, by uh, by announcing that he would support Dalas. So if Dalas becomes a president, then uh, Sajid in all probability is likely to become the Prime Minister. And uh, right now it's the President of Sri Lanka who holds executive powers. So uh, they may even look at uh, the Prime Minister now holding executive powers if if it goes as per plans. But at the moment, Ranil too still holds a chance considering that the Rajapakshas are still backing him. We'll have to wait and see. But protesters continue their demand of uh, the resignation of Ranil. Uh, they prefer Dalas over Ranil. And yesterday also in a press conference, they said that Ranil should uh, step down and they're waiting uh, to know how the day pans out to decide on their next course of action. Back to you. Purnima, stay with us. I want to go over now to our colleague Abhishek Cha. Abhishek, uh, just a while ago we heard a statement from the Indian High Commission. If you could walk us through what the commission had to say to Indian citizens in the area and if you could also tell us about how India is tracking developments in Sri Lanka right now. Uh, to, uh, India has been tracking the development very closely. Uh, we have, uh, like Indian government has been in touch with Sri Lankan uh, authorities. Uh, but that uh, connect has been mostly regarding humanitarian assistance or the economical assistance that India can provide to the Sri Lankan people in the short term and the kind of uh, policy decision that Sri Lankan uh, government will have to take for a long term solution where they can probably open up economies, they can uh, attract uh, more investment, they can make it more incentivized uh, and more uh, countries, especially Indian people, Indian uh, business person can go there, they can invest and probably this would uh, this will revive the economic uh, cycle of Sri Lanka back to the track. So this is how the correct has been uh, probably in the last few weeks. The political development has mostly been uh, internal uh, matter of Sri Lanka. That is how uh, the external affairs ministry has maintained its stance on Sri Lankan political development. Uh, meanwhile, there has been a report of an Indian uh, officer of Sri Lankan uh, high commissioner being attacked by a mob in Sri Lanka. Uh, in the wake of that incident, the uh, high commissioner has issued a statement saying that all the citizens of India should uh, be aware of the situation surrounding them and they should uh, be very careful uh, while trading uh, uh, in, in the parts of Sri Lanka where the mob and protesters uh, are uh, in, in a large number. Uh, it, however, the incident that has happened uh, is not uh, uh, being considered as uh, anti-India sentiment or something that has happened targeting Indian people. It could have been very, very possible that the person was just uh, struck uh, in, in, the, uh, in the protesting mobs and he got assaulted uh, by some crazy, uh, you know, hoodlums. Uh, it was not uh, something that uh, uh, India should worry as a as a person as a person that he was Indian and that is why he was attacked. So this is how the High Commissioner has maintained so far. Uh, political development are a very uh, internal issue of Sri Lanka, and uh, the the Indian government would like Sri Lankan uh, to have a proper stable political system with a democratic uh, setup. That is what the Indian uh, side has always maintained regarding the turmoil that we are, we are seeing in Sri Lanka. All right, Abhishek Purnima, thank you so much for joining me. For our audiences, we're going to be tracking that situation very closely today in Sri Lanka. The secret ballot's going to be taking place in just a few hours from now, and we may know who the new name is for Sri Lankan president by the end of the day. We're tracking that story. Right now, though, we have some breaking news coming in from Charka. Switching tracks right now as we've just...